All right, so Deadlock is Valve's newest MOBA shooter game. Very interesting mix, but you want to learn how to play this game, right? It is such a good game, but it is also very complex, like any MOBA, right? So let's get started, right? T today, we're going to be going through the basics of how to lane, what the jungle is, all all the little aspects of deadlock like all how like how does play a level work you know i'm sure you have a bunch of questions like that also we have the shop items what are the objectives of the game we need to know that for sure and obviously we need to know how to win the game right so let us get started all right so what's laning laning is how where the game starts off but first of all you have to pick a bunch of characters right so first you have to create your roster make sure you pick your favorite characters go test them out in the sandbox mode make sure you at least know how the abilities work that's pretty important make sure you select the priorities correctly it describes you could select a character's high priority you could select a character's slightly lower priority and then you could have characters selected you do need a minimum of three characters but you could have as many as you want you could select every character but you could only have one high priority and one priority character right that just this all makes sense so far all right, now what is the laning phase, right? Now the laning phase is defined as the first nine minutes of the game. And the lanes are assigned by like a hidden MMR matchup, but it's otherwise random, right? But for example, if you could queue up with a friend, the game will basically match you guys in a duo lane together as much as possible. So that's pretty convenient. That's that's actually so nice that they implemented that. Now your lane matchup is gonna determine like what items you need to buy. Maybe it might influence which abilities you start off with and like which ones you max first, but probably that's more or less set in stone depending on what you want to build on your character but yeah let's do a little dive into the lane right so how do we win lane so the basic idea of winning lane is to get the more souls than your rival laners right so you're both fighting for resources and like if you couldn't win lane you know maybe maybe there's a little bit of a skill issue or something like that you should at least try to like help out your other laners so the souls that you obtain from killing the troopers, you know, if you come from like a different MOBA, like uh, minions, right, it's the same thing. You get currency. The souls are currency. But not only, the souls aren't only like gold. The souls also dictate your ability power, which is the points you need to level up your abilities. And the souls dictate your level in a sense because it influences your character. It, the souls are everything because they influence your character directly. So how do I acquire souls? Right, so first you last hitting troopers right so you'll see the troopers get red when they're really low or they just got killed you need to make sure you get the last hit on them and then a soul orb will come out from the trooper and be like hey shoot me make sure and shoot it the enemy laners can steal it from you which is very very tilting you don't want to be dealing with that if anything you need to prioritize their red souls because you are both getting resources for yourself and also denying them resources right and at the end of the day this is a game of resources like ultimately no matter like you could carry yourself a lot by having really good aim but if somebody is like ten thousand souls on ahead of you is gonna be borderline impossible to kill them sometimes right you also get souls from killing the enemy players you get souls from destroying objectives which we will get into a bit later but objectives are for example the guardian that you could see within the lane or on the enemy side you need to make sure and destroy that you could also kill the neutral monster camps that are located throughout the map so you'll see these little eyeball creatures everywhere you could also get souls from them and we'll get into that aspect of the game later into the video and lastly there's like little stru structures and boxes located all throughout the map you need to make sure if if you see them shoot them just you know hit a you know it takes like one bullet to destroy them yeah you don't only get souls you also get different resources or little you get like different boosts from the break in these boxes and statues all right so make sure and look out for those as well all right so when you're laning you want to like try to manage your lanes troopers by tr keeping the troopers on your side of the lane unless for example you want to push for a kill you do not want to fight in your the enemy trooper wave the troopers do a shit ton of damage don't do it trust me you will just die unless the enemy is low and you want to like dive them within their wave don't run into their wave you will take a ton of damage but for example if you kill like one of the laners or both the laners now you want to shove the troopers to toward their guardian because now your troopers will be able to do damage to their guardian so basically the idea is that you want to manage the lane based on what your goals are right and for example 
we would talk about like helping other lanes if for example you are stomping your lane and for you've maybe destroyed their guardian or your trooper waves at their guardian you could try ganking the enemy we the enemy lane now what's gank ganking is basically like ganging up on another enemy because you have numbers advantage because you don't need to be in one part of the map at this time so you basically have a timer waiting for you to get back into lane and you could use that timer to roam to different lanes it's it's actually it catches so many people off guard you wouldn't you wouldn't believe so make sure and do that if you have the opportunity to do so right so we're talking about ganking if you you only want to gank if for example the wave state is good so like the friendly troopers are located under the enemy guardian or for example if if the enemy is in a position to be killed or like severely harassed you want to do that as well meaning the enemy is closer to your friendly guardian you don't want to, you, you may or may not want to just die the enemy under their guardian because the guardian does damage right the guardian is effectively another player if you're fighting underneath them you don't want to be in a numbers disadvantage that's silly that doesn't make any sense. Make sure I'm ping that you're coming, by the way. A lot of people don't look at the map, especially if you're brand new. Make sure, ping a bunch. Ping, ping so much, it might get slightly annoying because people just do not pay attention to the map whatsoever. It is, it will get better, but not right. All right, so diving into how the souls work. So again, during the laning phase, which is the first nine minutes of the game, last hitting the troopers gives half of the value of the souls and the other half comes from hitting the soul orbs that float from the minions. Now, if you're in a duo lane, you don't need to worry because both laners in a duo lane are given the full value of souls during the laning phase, at least for the first nine minutes. Past nine minutes, aka 10 minutes, you know, we could all count. The soul, the full soul value actually comes from hitting the orbs. So make sure that you get those orbs past the laning phase because you will lose all of the souls if the enemy takes it and trust me as you get better and you will get better because you're watching this video the enemies are gonna be starting to deny your souls and they're gonna be real aggressive about it too but also make sure that you're not like wasting time hitting the soul orbs so if there's no one around the soul orbs do give you the value of the souls if they expire assuming they don't get denied so make sure you don't waste your time like just hitting them if there's nobody around there's you could be doing other stuff one thing you might notice too, finishing up on the topic of souls, is there's a little a little text saying unsecured souls in the bottom right. Those souls come from when you kill the neutral monsters, or maybe you get souls from the various boxes and statues that are around. Those souls will be dropped on death. The only way to make them secured is to actually spend them, or they just become secured over time. Like you'll see the number like slowly drop as you're playing. Your total souls does include those unsecured souls, so don't like add the two numbers together or anything. The one number you need to pay attention to is the number of souls. So we've been using this term called jungling and calling things jungle monsters and stuff. Like, what is the jungle? Like, what? Why do you keep saying that? that? Doesn't make any sense. There's no jungle. This, this, ma this game is set in New York. There's literally no jungle whatsoever. Well, okay, so the jungle is the MOBA term for the neutral monster camps that are between the lanes. Now there's three different sizes of the jungle camps, right? So you can see here on the map, there's a bunch of different arrows with dashes underneath them. So the small camps are indicated by this little green triangle here. Then there's the medium camps that are indicated by the triangle with the underline underneath it. And then there's the large camps, which are the most difficult ones, it scales in terms of size. These ones do a ton of damage and they're indicated with the triangle with two underlines underneath it. They do give a ton of souls. So make sure if you have nothing better to do, don't be like idling around, just running around. Try to do these camps as well. And you, it will take some time to learn when exactly is a good timing to actually be doing the jungle camp. So for example, if your team is fighting, you might not necessarily want to be doing jungle camps. But maybe you can't get there in time, so it doesn't really matter, right? Like, you would just spend a bunch of time running to your team when you can't do anything and you'll just die. That might be a good time to do jungle camps. Not only that, there's these machines called Cinema Machines located all around the map is in a few places they're indicated by a circle surrounded by a square so right here those give a ton of souls you have to melee them they do take they they do damage to you so you have it's better to do a heavy melee attack by holding down your uh melee melee button but they do give a ton of souls and again those souls will be unsecured so try not to die with them because you will be very sad right so the basic idea of the jungle is and like when you want to do it you want to do it you want to jungle when the wave state is good and you want to collect some extra souls so maybe your wave is shoved underneath their guardian or maybe their walker right those are that's the second objective in the lane 
if you can't farm your lane safe, safely for some reason, you might want to do the jungle camps instead. Make note that there's more resources, and by resources, I mean souls, within the lanes themselves. So you don't necessarily want to spend a ton of time jungling. It just depends on the flow of the game. But for example, if your hero's like Infernus and he could clear jungle camps really, really quickly, or McGuinness, who could just leave the turrets down and they will do the jungle camp, that's a really good, those are really good heroes to be doing jungling with. Or maybe you need like a, you know, like maybe you need 500 souls really quickly to get to like your next item or power spike. Well, item would be power spike. Anyways, point being, if you need to get to your next item, maybe doing a jungle camp is a move. But you really need to have good map awareness. Like check your map every three seconds, basically, because the enemies will see you doing the jungle and they will come and kill you. Yeah, so what's with these arrows on the map? So you can see an arrow right here. And that arrow points to another arrow right here. Those are actually teleporters. They take like maybe five seconds to channel and then they teleport you to the other arrow. It's a really good way to get from one lane to the next if they're really far away. So make sure and use these if you need to like, for example, escape an enemy who hasn't found you yet, but you know that they will find you. But it's actually really bad for escaping because again, it takes like five seconds to channel. So somebody is going to shoot you in the back if they're actually chasing you. But it's also really good if you need to rotate to another lane, for example, to collect uh, troopers because, you know, you need those souls. You need those souls really badly. Yeah. And those are the teleporters. All right. Let's talk about your hero a little bit. So the... Hero level is dictated by the number of souls collected, like regardless of whether or not they've been spent. Yeah, so your hero level dictates is dictated by the number of souls that you get. If you hold tab, you can actually see the total power increases in the bottom left. The flask at the bottom right of that piece of UI basically tells you how many souls you need to get to the next level and you get to see what your total power increases from leveling is so for example in this image there's 3.2 more bullet damage from leveling up and also an additional 297 health so that's you know some <laughs> for sure i'm at least way tankier and you could also get these ability points from objectives so for example getting the guardian gives you an ability point really really useful to know and then you also get these power increases which increase like your base bullet damage your base melee damage and your base health and these increases are specific to the hero that you're playing right so make sure and read up all those stats and it the ui does show you that this might be a little bit you know hard to understand at first but you you'll get eventually but just make sure and read everything that you see and try to understand it yeah and also if you need to see the items that players build so in terms of the items there's the weapon items which are orange the vitality items which are green and the spirit items which are purple you can actually hover over the player portrait and see everything that you need to see so make sure now this might dictate your build a little bit so for example maybe you could flex like spirit armor over bullet armor if the enemy team is mostly building spirit dam damage stuff like that it's, these are things that like it will take a while to understand but it will make a big difference once you start building your character based on the enemy as well right so what are the objectives in the game the objectives so in order of the lane itself there's the guardian which is the giant statue you will first see it that's the first thing that you see when you get to the lane and there's the walker which is the quadrupod like monster that you get to after the guardian and then there's the base guardians which come in pairs and they're protecting each lane so you have eight in total to destroy then there's the left and right shrines which you need to destroy to be able to damage the patron and now the patron is kind of like the nexus in league of legends if you play if you played that game but basically that is what you need to destroy to actually win the game the patron itself has two different forms so it has the patron and then it's the weakened patron the weakened patron looks all sad and it's just a face on a ball they're probably gonna change that graphic at some point i imagine they're gonna make it a little bit more elaborate but you know it's an alpha right now so we expect yeah and you have to destroy the patron right so in terms of winning the game so you want to win lane by leaving the laning phase with more souls than your enemy laners and you want to push the objectives such as the lane guardians in the laning phase or for example we talked about if you have the opportunity to gank laners that are nearby the enemy laners depending on your wave state then make sure and do that and then once the laning phase is over which is again past nine minutes you might want to push lanes because you don't want your objectives being taken by the enemies and the enemies need the trooper waves to take the objectives. 
more or less. I mean, it gets it gets a little bit hairy because sometimes you could. The basic idea is that they need the trooper wave to take the objective. So make sure your lanes are pushed in. Then you could group with your teammates to take the objective. So for example, your teammates could group on one objective and take the walker while many of the lanes are pushed and the enemy's doing something else. Maybe one of the enemy died, so now you all have a numbers advantage to contest an objective like the mid boss. Right, and we will just go we'll go into the mid boss a little bit later. You wanna find time to take the medium and the large cams to keep your soul income up. Like if all the lanes are pushed or you just cannot take trooper waves without dying, you might wanna do the camps instead, right? And you wanna just close out the game by like getting picks on the enemy players, right? You wanna kill them and then group with your teams with your team to get to the enemy shrines. Once you get the shrines, the shrines fall surprisingly fast like the objectives don't take that much time to do so make sure and abuse your number advantages like if one of the enemy players is dead then you have like a 6v5 make sure and abuse that advantage maybe you have a 6v5 or maybe you have a 5v5 with another person pushing one lane on the far end and you have like two points of pressure on the map that, that's fantastic right and then once you destroy the patron you win you're happy your team is happy etc etc now i'm just gonna go into two aspects of the game that we've not talked about yet so you might hear something the announcer is like for soul Odin is available um i don't think she sounds like that but you know more or less so what is the soul urn exactly the soul urn is an objective that spawns on the chalk outlines on either either side of the map and you have to move it to the opposite end of the map the soul urn does spawn at 10 minutes for the first time so make sure to look out for that right you do have timers to kind of remember these things as well so you might want to plan for these objectives instead of just like reacting to it instead of you you might be able to have lanes pushed when the soul urn is about to spawn so that you could actually capture it and run it to the other side of the map safely now the player that captures the urn everybody gets bonus souls from the urns but the player that captures the urn gets 25 percent bonus souls and one ability point which is really nice because then you get to put that towards strengthening your abilities and a big part of this game is staying ahead in terms of souls because the souls influence your car your hero's strength and therefore how hard you're gonna clap the enemy red right? at the end of the day the sad part is you can't use any abilities or items or your gun while you're holding the urn but one thing you could do is that you could melee that's probably not gonna help you but is it good to know also there's heroes like paradox for example that could use a movement ability and then pick up the urn and then the movement ability will last throughout the urns while you're carrying the urn that is really important to remember depends on your hero of course but the one i know for sure is paradox and the final objective that we didn't cover yet is the mid boss so at 10 minutes into the game you'll hear something about a mid boss spawning like what is the mid ball boss is just another giant eyeball alien but the mid boss drops an item called the rejuvenator which uh spawns after his death and he's it slowly descends and you have to capture it you have to capture it by heavy meleeing it and the enemy team could steal it so you are actually, even if you get the rejuvenator and the mid boss, even if you kill the mid boss, you need to make sure you get the rejuvenator or else you kill the mid boss for no reason. And again, you will be very, very sad. You could actually steal. So look at this clip. This clip is from Mick Mikhail S way, where they just like teleport into the middle of the mid boss fight and just punch the rejuvenator and they die, but they get the rejuvenator for the entire team. And like, why would you want the rejuvenator, right? the rejuvenator it gives you a 50 percent faster spawn for your entire team once and it also buffs your current troopers with 50 percent hp and also increases your fire rate and the reason it does this is because it gives you the reason it does it it gives you a much stronger push so you could pressure the enemy base much better once you kill the mid boss which is really nice now the one thing is if you are shooting the mid boss you realize that there's a yellow bar before the actual health bar you need to pass a dps check to hurt the boss uh which makes it a real i don't i haven't been able to you might be able to do it by yourself but you need teammates to do it right so make sure your entire team is on the same page when you start doing the mid boss all right yeah but that's it for the beginner guide to deadlock i hope you all enjoyed i hope you all learned something i will do some more videos as well on the various aspects of the game because we all need to learn this game is so new and is way too much fun so we're all going to be playing it basically. But yeah, make sure and like and subscribe this video if it helped you. Um, there will be more Deadlock content coming out, even though even though for now, you know, I can't actually publish the video. But there will be more Deadlock content, right? So yeah, hope you learned something and I'll see you guys soon for another video, right? So take care.